This video is sponsored by no one. The machines here are ones I have purchased. Information is both from visual reference and information from the HP website. Special thanks to Low Castle Tech for the shout out on his recent video and for inspiring me to get this one done. Check them out if you get a chance. Used business computers are common to find after businesses do tech refreshes and sometimes you can snag a still decent machine for 10 to 20% of the original sales price. Used HP ProDesk and Elite Desks are good examples of that. Currently HP sells their ninth generation of those models which is noted by the G9. I own a couple of all black G1 and G2 systems and have recently acquired quite a few that are newer, the silver and black models that can be G3 up to G6 in model generation. What though are the differences between all the different models and generations, and what do you get with each one? I've put together some information that could be helpful if you're looking at one of these yourself. There are many different size platforms of the HP ProDesk and Elite Desk systems, and today I'm going to focus on the middle size, called SFF or Small Form Factor. HP released these with the Intel and AMD processors, but I'm only going to focus on the Intel systems, the ProDesk 400, 600, and Elite Desk 800. I'm not going to focus on the optional video cards or individual processors or storage configurations as sold, as these systems might not have any storage, no video cards, and maybe no memory or CPU. The HP ProDesk 400 looks to be the entry level of HP business machines when these were released. This is in part due to the fact that chassis didn't get the upgrade at the same time as a ProDesk 600 and Elite Desk 800. This is also further evident because of the reduced number of ports, and the processor is often a generation behind the other models as well. The 400 received the silver and black facelift with the G4 series. The small form factor model here has an i5-6500, but it could run 6th and 7th gen Intel Core processors up to the i7-7700. The 400 in this generation are identifiable by only two USB ports on the front, which are USB 1.1 along with a headphone jack. An SD card reader was also optional. Around back we have separate audio in and out jacks. Display is provided by DisplayPort 1.2 or VGA. Network is Gigabit Ethernet, and of the six USB ports, four are USB 2.0 and two are USB 3.1. That seems pretty standard for all the ProDesk 400 G4, G5, and G6 models. Inside this G4, we can see there are two PCIe slots, one X16 and one X4. There's an M.2 slot, but that's only for Wi-Fi. Storage configurations are for a slim optical drive and either a 3.5 inch or 2.5 inch hard drive or SSD. There was an option for NVMe storage in this model, but it was a turbo drive connected through the PCIe X4 expansion slot. The ProDesk 400 G5 model upgrade runs the 8th generation Intel Core processors up to an i7-8700. Internal changes include an additional M.2 PCIe X4 slot for 2230 or 2280 NVMe drives, and a step down from the X4 PCIe expansion slot to an X1. Also, two 2.5 inch drives can be installed with an adapter, and there is now three SATA ports on the motherboard. The G6 model change added the ability to run the 9th generation Intel Core processors up to the i9-9900 with a 65 watt TDP. It could also run some 8th generation processors too. The HP ProDesk 600 is a step above the 400 with more connectivity options and during this period a generation ahead in processors supported. The silver and black models start with the 600 G3. These could run the 6th and 7th gen Intel Core processors up to the i7-7700. The front you can immediately tell from the 400. This 600G3 has a headphone jack and 4 USB Type-A ports, 2 USB 2.0 and 2 USB 3.1, and a USB 3.1 Gen 1 Type-C port as well. An optional SD card reader was available, but not present here. Around back we have the audio in and out connectors, Video Out supports two monitors via DisplayPort connections. 
There is also an optional video port that could be a third DisplayPort connection, VGA, HDMI, or another USB-C connector with alternate display out. There is also a spot where there could be a dedicated DB9 serial connector. Network connection is Gigabit Ethernet and six USB ports, four of them USB 2.0 ports and two USB 3.1. That is pretty standard I.O. for the ProDesk 600 G3, G4, and G5 with some exception. The G4 upgrades the USB 3.1 ports on the front to Gen 2 and on the back changes the USB ports to two USB 2.0 to USB 3.1 Gen 1 and two USB 3.1 Gen 2. Inside this G3, we can see one PCIe X16 slot and an X4 slot. There is an M.2 slot for Wi-Fi and one for NVMe storage as well. Drives can also be connected through the two SATA ports. The documentation only says this can hold one optical drive and one three and a half or two and a half inch drive with an adapter. Memory storage can be connected with four DIMM slots supporting up to 64 gigabits of RAM. The G4 added another SATA port and the ability to have two 2.5 inch drives with an adapter of course, and the G5 was able to support up to 128 gigabytes of RAM. Processor support changed with the G4 running the 8th generation Intel Core processors from Celerons up to the i7-8700. The G5 further allowed for running some 8th gen and the 9th gen processors up to the i9-9900. Now on to my favorite, the Elite Desk 800 small form factor. The silver and black Elite Desk small form factor started with the G3 and it is a little bigger than the ProDesk models. The G3 could support 6th and 7th gen Intel Core processors up to the i7-7700. The front I.O. of the Elite Desk looks similar to the ProDesk 600s, but it can be easily identified by a second headphone jack next to the combo headphone mic jack. The G3 had two USB 2.0 and two USB 3.1 Gen 1 Type-A ports on the front, along with a USB 3.1 Gen 1 Type-C port. The front USB 3.1 ports starting on the G4 were upgraded to USB 3.1 Gen 2. Again, there is a spot for an optional SD card reader. Around back we have again separate audio in and out jacks. Video is provided through two DisplayPort 1.2 connections along with a third video option at port as well. The networking is still Gigabit Ethernet with two USB 2.0 ports underneath and four USB 3.1 ports. Those are USB 3.1 Gen 1 on the G3, with two upgraded to USB 3.1 Gen 2 on the G4, and it appears all four of those are USB 3.1 Gen 2 on the G5. There is also a spot for a DB9 serial connection and what looks like four expansion slots. Inside, the expansion slots for the G3, G4, and G5 are the same. Two PCIe X1 slots, a PCIe X16 slot, and a PCIe X16 wired as an X4. On the G3, there are two M.2 slots, one for wireless and the second for NVMe storage as 2230 or 2280. The G4 adds another M.2 slot for NVMe storage or Intel Optane. The G3 also has four SATA connectors, while the G4 and G5 only have three. Those can be connected to two 3.5 inch drives, one 2.5 inch drive, and a slim optical drive. The G5 changed storage to only one 3.5 inch drive but allows for three 2.5 inch drives. There are also four DIMM slots for a total allowable 64 gigabytes of memory in the G3 and G4 and 128 gigabytes in the G5. When it comes to processors, the G3 can run 6th and 7th gen Intel processors up to the i7-7700 while the G4 runs 8th gen processors up to the 95 watt TDP i7-8700K. The G5 can run some 8th gen and 9th gen processors and up to the i9-9900K. The machines I've talked about today all use Intel Core processors that are built with 14 nanometer lithography and idle power is still quite a bit lower than the preceding 22 nanometer chips. For general purpose, any of the four core processors are still great, 
yet the useful days of the 6th and 7th gen core processors is limited due to Windows 11 system requirements. They could still make great Linux desktop alternatives though. Overall, my pick is the HP ProDesk 600 G4 or G5 with an i3 or i5 based processor. Those will be 4 or 6 core respectively. That is what I'm writing this script on and I picked it up for $45. All I had to do was add storage which I did with an M.2 NVMe drive that would cost around $35. So for under $100 I have a computer that will run Windows 11 with no issues. I'm just using Linux with it as an experiment. I'm personally thinking of moving to the Elite Desk 800 G4 though just for more storage options. What do you think? Would you take a chance on one of these systems and fix it up yourself? One that is sold online with processor and RAM but no OS drive are normally easy to use. Just pop in the appropriate drive. Install Windows, and if all is well, you're up and running. I hope that you found this information helpful. If you have, please consider subscribing, maybe even giving a super thanks. I've spent over $600 on the computer scene in this video, and that exceeds any ad revenue that I've brought in so far. I am going to try putting some of these up for sale, but I think the Elite Desk 800 Tower will be a fun one to experiment with. That is all for this video. If you'd like to see a similar video of the HP Minis of the same era, just let me know, and I'm sure I could put something together. Think I missed something? Let me know as well. Or just comment zig, and I'll know you've made it this far. And if someone from HP is watching, yes, I'd love to evaluate a Z2G9 system. Until next time, I'm Good Monkey. Thanks for watching. I hope that it wasn't terrible. The machines I've talked about today all use Intel, Intel 4?